Okay, so in this experiment, what I'm going to do is to look at some of the different methods of rust prevention and look at how effective they are. So the first rust prevention method that I'm going to look at is the use of special anti-rust paint. So I've got a couple of nails here, which I'm just going to paint and I'll set these to one side um, and, and let that paint dry. The second messy treatment that I'm going to look at is um, just coating the nails in some Vaseline. I'm going to pop them into a test tube. Now both of the methods used so far use a barrier method, so the paint provides a barrier to stop the water and oxygen getting to the nail um, and the, the grease does a, a similar job. So what I'm going to do in the next two test tubes is I'm going to use some chemistry. So I'm going to put a little bit of a more reactive metal around the nail, so first more reactive metal that I'm going to use is magnesium. And I'm just going to coil a bit of magnesium around the nail. Okay, so that's my two nails with magnesium around them. Um, and then the last method I'm going to look at is using another more reactive metal, this time we're going to use zinc. Now using zinc as a coating around um, iron has a special name, it's called galvanizing. Um, and so the zinc um, attached to that nail creates a, a galvanized bit of iron. And so we'll um, wait for the paint to dry and then we'll, we'll add some water and we'll leave these for some time. Okay, so the paint on these nails has been drying now for um, a little while, so I'll just pop the painted nails into the test tube and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to each test tube. And we'll leave these for couple of weeks and we'll see which rust prevention treatment worked the best. So these nails have been reacting for the last couple of weeks and I will get them out of the test tubes and have a look at them to see what's been happening over that time. Okay, so looking at the first prevention of rust method, we've used the anti-rusting paint on the nails and you can see that there's not a lot of rust there. The paint has provided a good barrier protecting the iron from the water and the oxygen. However, you can see that where I wasn't perfectly accurate with the, the paint, there is some rust there. And so the, the painting method is effective, but only if you cover all of the, the nail 
and that can only then provide a barrier. If there's a break in the, the paint, then the water and oxygen is able to get to the iron and the iron will still rust under those conditions. So painting is cheap, it's a good method, but you do need to make sure that all of the iron is fully coated with the paint. The next method, similar to painting, was to put a barrier around the nails. Um, this time the barrier was some Vaseline, some grease, and again it's worked fairly well, except for where the, the Vaseline wasn't totally covering the nail, and you can see some spots of rust in those places. So again, it's a cheap method, it is effective, but only if the nail is completely covered in the, the, the grease, or in this case the Vaseline. So both of these methods provide a barrier to prevent the water and oxygen getting to the iron, but the iron will still rust if the, the barrier um, is broken at all. The next method to protect the, the iron from rusting was to wrap the metal in a more reactive metal. In this case, um, I, reacted, I, I wrapped the, the nails with some magnesium. And if we just remove the nail from the magnesium, What you might be able to see is that there is some reaction on the magnesium. It, it's not as good as it once was, but the nails have worked really very well and those nails are not showing um, much, if any, sign of any rusting. So this method is called sacrificial protection. The more reactive metal, the magnesium, is sacrificing itself, it's reacting with the water and oxygen instead of the iron reacting with the water and the oxygen. And so the magnesium has sacrificed itself in order to protect the iron. And this is a really effective way of preventing rust because the more reactive metal does not need to be fully covering the, the whole of the, the iron object and it will still provide some protection. One example of this use is in boats and here's a, an image of my, my parents canal boat and you can see a block of magnesium bolted to the, the hull of the, of the boat and that block of magnesium protects the whole of the hull even if the paint gets chipped from rusting. And so using magnesium to protect the iron is a really effective way of preventing rust. The problem, of course, is that magnesium is quite expensive and so that takes quite a lot of money to protect that object. And then finally, another sacrificial protection method um, using zinc to surround the iron. Now, on first inspection it would seem that this hasn't worked very well at all because the nail at the top there has become really quite rusty. Now what I think has been happening there is that the, the way that the zinc got caught is that the zinc was actually out of the water and so therefore that top nail had a lot of oxygen and water touching the iron, but the zinc was, was out of the water. And if I remove that zinc, you can see quite a bit of evidence of rust on that top nail. However, the bottom nail is still really quite clean and there's, there's not much evidence of rust on that bottom nail. Um, might be a little bit from where it was touching the, the top nail, but the bottom nail that had the zinc um, surrounding it and the zinc was immersed in the water, that has proved effective. And remember, surrounding um, the iron with zinc is known as galvanising. So galvanising the nail does work effectively, even if the, the zinc is chipped. 
Um, this is really useful for things like dust bins, which get bashed around quite a bit, um, and nails. You can get galvanised nails, which um, obviously get get hit, and the the surface might start to chip away a little bit. So I think what we can conclude from this one is that this is effective, but um, if the, the nail is in contact with oxygen and water and the zinc isn't part of that, then the nail will still, or the iron will still rust. So we've looked at two different methods. We've looked at providing a barrier, and that's cheap, it's effective, but only if the barrier isn't broken at all. And we've looked at sacrificial protection, where we use a more reactive metal than iron to protect the iron, and that is expensive, but it's very effective and will work even if the surface of the, um, of the iron isn't completely covered by the sacrificial metal.